Liam came from Oklahoma Shiitake. Now that we learned the basic integration work for Lockdown Shiitake Mushrooms in the previous video, this time it will be a continuation of the post inoculation management that I explained briefly. For those who think, hey, I don't get what you're talking about, we recommend that you watch the video link in the description that appears when you press the title. The post management inoculation video that I will talk about will consist 7 parts in total. I will upload the omniverse that will be put together again. If you're busy, we recommend you to watch only the omniverse. Since what we are going to talk about is an example of our cultivation method, we will explain on the premise that you are a beginner and you can do all inoculation work. As I say every time, it's not a general theory because it is based on our individual opinions. So please make your own judgment. By the way, it's okay to listen to this while doing other work. Alright, let's go. At the end of the previous video, inoculation work, I explained the initial management after inoculation. This management is called first incubation. Since it is the most important in the cultivation of low-grown shiitake mushrooms, I will explain this first incubation as supplementing the previous content. First of all, the logs that have been inoculated can be placed vertically or horizontally. We'll stack them like firewood, which is the densest way of stacking logs. The reason for the way of stacking is to prevent the logs from drying out and getting cold below 0 degrees Celsius. When it dries or goes below 0, the activity of the spawn and mycelium almost stop. And in the most worst case, even though we have been spending a lot of time, the shiitake mushroom do not come out in the fall, like this. That really disappointed us. So I don't want you to experience it. We've had this kind of experiences many times and still have it. Don't fall into the perfectionism. You won't be able to recover because you just look at the parts that failed. Let's think about the failure as necessary thing. Anyways, after stacking the light firewood, moisturize it with a thin plastic sheet. The optimal environment for the spawn. No wind, low temperature, enough oxygen, darkness. We also explained that it is the barn that has these four environments. I will explain these four environments in more detail than last time. The first one, no wind. This is for preventing the shiitake logs from drying out and to promote moisturization. Some people put straw mat or cardboard on top. We said the first incubation is the most important because everything will be over when spawn dries here. If you fail at the first incubation, the merch ends there. Especially those who are aiming for the splendid or beautiful shiitake mushroom inoculate with sawdust to spawn, right? It produces high quality mushrooms. Unfortunately, the weakest spawn against drying is sawdust. Since the surface area is much larger than dowel and thimble spawn, it dries quickly if left alone. If you compare this state with humans, it is baby. Everyone takes care of all of babies, right? It is the same freshly inoculated log as that is newborn baby. We are not saying that you should be overprotective, but to prepare and watch over the proper environment and to deal with any problems. However, there is one big difference between babies and inoculated logs. It is self-assertive or not. The babies cry and they insist that they are hungry or change diapers. But that is not the case with shiitake mushroom logs. They are just silenced and nothing like this. It's like a taking care of baby who doesn't cry at all. However, there are some effective clues among them, such as water drops, mycelium, and temperature, which tell us to some extent. About the water drops, the spawn grows in the inoculated log and at the same time pushes out excess water in the log. It evaporates and condenses on the plastic sheet, appearing as water drops. You can think that there are a lot of water drops, it is going well so far. Next is mycelium, which is often seen in styrofoam flasks. 
This is because the mycelium not only grow in the logs, but also on the surface of it. Styrofoam plaques have gaps between the plaque and bark. It is an important index that allows you to visually confirm the growth of shiitake mushrooms based on the growth with this. Temperature will be explained in the next section. The second is low temperature. But please wait to say you just said the temperature shouldn't be below zero. This low temperature is the room temperature which is around 5 degrees Celsius. And the shiitake mushrooms slowly spread to the logs. This around 5 degrees Celsius is important. The reason is that when the mycelium grow and consume oxygen to act, heat is generated. We call it mycelium heat. It is after April that this heat can stay in the sheet and reach 25 degrees Celsius or higher. Of course, it depends on the location. As I mentioned in the previous video, inoculation season, when the temperature rises over 25 degrees Celsius, the spawn that were devoted to growing change to decaying logs. As the temperature get higher, this decaying part increases more. This means that lower temperature is better than higher temperature. Furthermore, there's another big advantage with low temperature. It's almost no breeding of harmful fungi. Shiitake mushrooms are pretty resistant to the cold. It is slow, but active even around 5 degrees Celsius. In case of below zero, there's almost no activity but the spawn is still alive. On the other hand, many fungi such as mold spread on the surface, so they rarely become active around 5 degrees Celsius. You already know how important it is to grow shiitake mycelium in winter. The third is enough oxygen. This is simple. Fungi are living things, so they need to breathe like humans. And don't forget the concentration of CO2 along with the oxygen. In humans, headache can be occurred when CO2 level reached 2 to 3 percent. Shiitake mushrooms can fall into the same situation. However, shiitake spawn is not as weak as humans, so we don't think you need to be so nervous unless you leave them for a long time. In order to secure this oxygen and emit CO2, it is necessary to open the plastic sheet many times, ideally. When the sheet surface is full of water drops, open it to change air and moisture. Repeat this work over a period of 1 to 3 months. This repeated drying and moisturizing is important. The reason is that the mycelium grows as water in the logs drains. Create the best environment with the plastic sheet to stimulate the growth of them. And dry the logs a little so that the water in the logs can be drained efficiently. This ideal growth of mycelium can be achieved by repeating this exquisite balance. However, this is pretty hard to create a stable and good environment. The logs at the edge and below are cold, while the logs at the center and above are high. CO2 is also heavier than air, so it tends to stay on the ground. It can be improved more in this issue, so please try to deal with it. We also research it every year. The darkness makes mycelium grow faster for some reason. Originally, mushrooms prefer dark and damp places, but in nature, it is only dark at night. So I wonder if mycelium are more likely to grow at night than during the day. This is our guess and there's no confirmation. But I also wonder if there is a tendency to spread the mycelium to the darker and more shadowy areas so that the mushrooms themselves do not dry out in the sunlight. This means that if you make the nights artificially, the mycelium will always grow faster. In my experience so far, it's okay if you can't make it pitch black, but if you're aggressive, why don't you try it? Finally, I'd like to briefly explain how to manage thimble and double spawn, because we only cultivate sawdust spawn, the main information are from other growers. After inoculation, thimble and dowel can be managed in the same way as soda spawn on concrete or in a dry place such as under eaves. It is very different when the logs are placed in the forest. 
stacking logs in a place where there is a little sunlight through the trees and leaves. It is better to set logs on the ground, not directly. There's no need to cover it with anything. Due to the natural conditions, the logs may be become too dry if the good weather continues. But basically, it rains moderately. The water is properly replenished. Shiitake mushrooms and other mushrooms grow naturally, so it is understandable that the natural environment is good for them. Thimbo and double spawn have already solidified and are resistant to drying, so they grow in logs even in the state close to natural farming. If you plan to grow in the dry environment, it may be safer to avoid sawdust spawn. This time I explained in a little more detail about the post immigration. No matter how carefully we explain it, you can't really get it. One try is worth a thousand words. After inoculation, first incubation is to stack inoculated logs like firewood without space to avoid drying and coldness. It can be stacked vertical or horizontal either way. In case of sawdust spawn, it is essential to moisturize by covering with a plastic sheet. There are four conditions for the first incubation for sawdust spawn. No wind, low temperature, enough oxygen, and darkness. The first one is no wind. Logs and spawn dry out as soon as wind hits them. Keep in mind that never dry out the spawn even if you die. The second one is low temperature. At a temperature of around 5 degrees Celsius, shiitake mycerium grow little by little while mold and other harmful fungi hardly grow. If this period is longer, the spread rate of mycerium will increase dramatically. The third is enough oxygen. Oxygen is required by almost all living things, mushrooms as well. So don't leave this plastic sheet covered, but roll it up sometimes to ventilate. And the last one, darkness. This is like an option to improve the growth of spawn. But if you want to find out, why not give it a try? A burn meets these four conditions. Why don't you try to manage the logs with the conditions like burn? If you have a real barn, you can manage them any as it is. Thimbo and Dowel Spawn can be covered with plastic sheet in a dry place like soda spawn, but it seems that plastic sheet is not necessary when managing in the forest. That is about the flow of first incubation, which is said to be the most important in the cultivation of log grown shiitake mushrooms. We think that the content of this time was relatively easy to understand because it was briefly mentioned in the video's inoculation work series. If you are still not sure, or if you have any ambiguity, please look back over and over again. We will continue to provide videos that are useful for mushroom cultivation. Thank you for watching and your precious time. See you next time.